Hi again, everyone, and welcome to UWPatchers.com. I'm Mike Lucas. I'm joined by Nebraska's Tom Osborne and Wisconsin's Barry Alvarez, and I'd be remiss in the company of two Hall of Famers if I didn't ask you this first. What do you miss the most about coaching? I'll start with you, Tom. Well, I, I miss the uh, players, mostly, and I, I miss the game. I, it was always a little bit like a chess match to me, kind of the strategy and trying to figure out what somebody else was going to do, and then once you saw what they were going to do, how do you adjust during the ball game? But uh, those are the things. There's some things about coaching I don't miss, but those are the, the two things I miss. Barry? Well, you know, I have to agree. I, I miss the relationship with players, the relationship with your staff. I think that's why every, anyone gets into coaching, is uh, you enjoy working with people, teaching, teaching young people how to play. Uh, I miss big games. I'd love to be coaching in this game. I, I, I really enjoyed coaching in big games and the preparation going into it. I, I thought it was always fun. Common denominator for both of you is Bob Devaney. The impact he had on, on both of your lives. And could he be successful in today's landscape coaching? Tom? Oh, yeah. The uh, principles and the fundamentals are the same, you know. And uh, Bob, uh, Bob was a unique guy. He, uh, uh, I think Barry would attest to this. He, he believed in uh, physical, hard-nosed football. And, um, but he was also a relationship guy. He had a good sense of humor, had a great sense of humor. And he, uh, he was an Irishman, and you know, he could get volatile, and, and he'd uh, get angry, but he never, he always got over it very quickly. And he had a great sense of humor, and he had a great uh, knack of knowing when to drive the players and when to joke around and, and loosen up. And uh, so I, I learned a lot from Bob just about relating to people. And, uh, and as an athletic director, I was very fortunate to be a, a head coach, head football coach, and have Bob as my athletic director for the better part of 20 years. And uh, so we always had a great relationship. We were different people, but we always got along very well. I always thought uh, uh, he, he really had a sp special um, characteristic of how he carried himself, where he could get along, you know, he could, he could be in with people in a black tie, in, in a room with all people in black ties, and he would be the center of attention, you know. And, uh, and then he'd go the next day, he'd be uh, in a little tavern with a bunch of uh, miners or mill workers or, or whatever, same thing. Uh, but he had a great way with people. Um, as a coach, there's no doubt in my mind, he could be successful today for, because everything, what he did was sound. Um, it's a lot of the way Nebraska plays today and the way we play today. Um, but he was very, uh, really a unique person. Someone I, I really, you know, I, I tried to watch. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to coach. I tried to watch what he and his staff did. He had a tremendous staff. Uh, and you noticed how he dealt with people, dealt with players. When you had a big win, he'd, he'd try to temper you, find, you know, find criticism. When you had a tough loss, you know, he, he knew when to push and when to back off. And, uh, that, that's important in coaching, and I, I don't think a lot of players uh, have the opportunity to play for a coach that, that understands all those things. Neither of you are that far removed from the sidelines in coaching, but would you have to make some adjustments to today's game if you came back tomorrow, Tom? No, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I think you've got to be yourself and certain things you believe in, and uh, I'd still run option football, and I would still uh, emphasize the kicking game and defense and all those things. Um, you know, people think that kids are different, and some of the uh, influences of culture are a little bit different. The internet, uh, Facebook, um, the recruiting services, uh, those things certainly have changed. The money in the game has changed. But still, it's uh, blocking and tackling, and it's people, and if you can set out a vision for your players and they understand what it is you want and how to do it um, and you recruit players with character which I think we did and which these coaches are doing now um, things will fall into place for you so I, I wouldn't do it any different than I did I, I, I wouldn't either football is good football is good football it, it does make any difference what the style whether was whether whether it's option football whether it's uh, a pro attack like we run or whether it's a spread attack which a lot of people were using today it's you still have to be sound uh, and, and, and good fundamentally uh, you have to execute uh, you know the, the football phase of it is just 
being able to teach it and execute it, have your players execute it on the field. Uh, as far as dealing with, and I'm asked this all the time, the difference between athletes today and would you coach them differently? And I, you know, I, I think they, athletes today want to, they want to have a chance to win. They want to, they want to know that you're preparing them well. If, I, I always felt if they, they were improving, you never had a morale problem. Um, so, but they are more aware today than they were, and they have more decisions to make today than they did early on. But uh, uh, if you treat them fairly and you're consistent with them, uh, they don't have any complaints, and, and you'll get good results. One final thought. <clears throat> College football has never been more popular than it is today, but it was a tough off season for the sport. What's, what's on the horizon for, for college football, Tom? Well, it's a, it's a little bit unpredictable right now. Um, some people think that it's inevitable that we're going to have a bunch of 16-team conferences. I don't really believe that necessarily. Um, I think the Pac-10 has put the brakes on for now. I don't think the Big Ten is tremendously interested in expanding, as, as I've tried to read Jim Delaney. Southeast Conference may add one more. and uh, so. Uh, but certainly the Big East is uh, in a position where they we're going to have to make some changes. Um, the uh, the off season was interesting in that uh, there's a lot of attention paid to a couple of schools and some of their indiscretions. But uh, you know, I coached back in the '70s and the '80s, and there was a lot of stuff going on back there that was cars and clothes and cash, and it was it was pretty bad stuff. And most of the things that you saw happen at these schools were uh, after the players had gotten there. They, they weren't uh, an attempt to get a competitive edge in most cases. Uh, maybe somebody didn't um, sign off on a certain form or some booster did something. And so uh, I think that probably college athletics overall in terms of academics, in terms of ethics and everything is sounder than it was 30 years ago. But yet if you read the papers, you get the, the opposite impression. So uh, at least that's my take on it. I don't know how Mary feels yeah, about it. You know, I think Jim Delaney made a good point. When you have the high-profile schools, when you have an Ohio State, Michigan, UConn in basketball, Miami, uh, when you have the high-profile schools involved in violations, uh, it, it's really blown out of proportion. Uh, Jim talked about it. San Diego with the point shaving. You don't, you don't even read anything about it. Um, I, I think our new president of the NC2A, Mark Emmert, is addressing some issues that have to be dealt with in the NC2A. Um, I think he's going to emphasize, and they're trying to emphasize, compliance. What do the coaches, what do we really need? And what, what you can eliminate, what you can actually um, police, you know, what you don't have enough, you don't have enough uh, uh, investigators and people to, to support all the rules. The rules are ridiculous. The, the, the rule book is ridiculous. It has to be, that has to be addressed. They want to look at, uh, you know, you talk about play, uh, pay for play, paying the players, increasing what they get. Uh, student welfare is going to be addressed. I, I, I see us, uh, back when I played, you get laundry money of $15 a month, unless you had more laundry. Uh, $15 a month. Now, you know, I, and I have no problem with it if you built that into a scholarship, whatever an additional stipend would be for, for student athletes, but uh, that, that will be addressed. And, uh, and academically, admissions and, and, and disallowing play, postseason play, uh, for lack of graduation rates. So those things are going to be addressed. Coach Osborne, thank you. Coach Alvarez, thank you. Thank you for watching uwbadgers.com.